Appreciate y'all as usual. Ow. Oh, I had the stage. What am I doing? There we go. There we go. What's going on, folks? I see you, Cody K. First out the limo. Bob 316. Jason Sink. My God. What's going on, fellas? Uh, watching the end of this uh, Maryland and Iowa State game. I picked Maryland to upset Iowa State. And at halftime, uh, Maryland was giving Iowa State the business. But this girl right here at the free throw line, they sent her. Her name is Audi Crooks. She has been killing them tonight. How many points she got? She has been killing them. She got 40 points and 12 boards. And she missed both free throws. But it's 35 seconds left. They're up by five. So they need some three points. They need some three-point shots. They got to get the ball back. So they're not out of it, but um, Maryland got a shot. Maryland got a shot. Paper shredders are working overtime. Facts. <laughs> Big facts, bro. Big facts. Um, Let me see. Here we go. Big facts. Man, I'm telling you, man, the the – with the exception of the Kentucky game, which was phenomenal and how everything went down and just the the sheer chaos that it caused. Um, it's been some pretty good upsets on both sides, mainly with the men. Uh, most of the women have been handling the business. It looks like Oregon State is going to win. Well, I should say they're in the third quarter. They're up by about uh, 14 points, looks like. Uh, looks like. Most likely Maryland's going to go down unless they do something miraculous or Iowa State does something stupid. Um, Norfolk State. Uh, Norfolk and Stanford play at 10 p.m. Why is this? Oh, because it's in California. Duh. Uh, oh, damn. Texas A&M and Nebraska still got to play tonight. They're playing at 1030. So you got 10 and 1030. Uh, Colorado beat Drake. So that game's over with. South Carolina just absolutely destroyed Presbyterian. 91 to 39. Um, looks like Maryland is fouling, and all they got to do is hit a free throw, and this ball game's over. So it looks like Maryland, they all dropping their heads because they know what the deal is. So good run by them. Good shot. But that second half, they couldn't stop Audi Crooks. Um, yeah, South Carolina, 91 to 39. That's like something you would do on like a video game or something. That wasn't even funny. That was no contest. No contest. Malaysia for a while they went, went to work, but I mean Presbyterian, come on. They they weren't gonna offer no um resistance. Um same thing with Texas and Drexel. Texas dropped Drexel 82 to 42. Good lord. By 40 points. Sheesh. Oh my god. O State. One by what 23. LSU did not look good today. LSU was battling Rice. <clears throat> Rice kept it close for most of the game. They ended up winning by 10, but LSU did not look good at all. Um Moreau had 15 points. Uh, that's ball game right there. Running out the clock. Iowa State gets the win. Uh, Marshall got flabbergasted by Virginia Tech, 92-49. to 49. Good Lord. Woo, that was a butt whooping. 
Uh, Portland put up a game against Kansas State. Kansas State comes out on top, 78-65. Um, Lee had 21 points for Kansas State. Uh, Baylor over Vanderbilt. I got to update my uh, my chart, too. Um, da, 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 da. I, I watched the Middle Tennessee game, and Middle Tennessee was giving Louisville the business, and they let Louisville stay in the game, but they did not buckle. They did not buckle. Uh, Middle Tennessee gets the upset. Uh, number 11 takes out a number six. And Richmond had Duke on the ropes. Richmond came out hard in the first half. And then the third quarter, uh, they lost 23 to 10 in the third quarter. And then they just couldn't, Duke just ran away with it. So I don't know. They were playing well in just that second half. Uh, Duke just came out and wasn't, wasn't messing around. Uh, Close one, North Carolina beat Michigan State. I thought Michigan State was going to win that game, so I got that wrong on my brackets. And then Alabama took care of Florida State. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much the game. So what we got tomorrow, we got the USC, Iowa. Uh, we got a lot of good teams um, still playing tomorrow. So it's a lot of good, good competition coming. A lot of good competition coming. A lot of good games. So uh, I have definitely been enjoying this more than I've enjoyed the uh, men's game. So it is what it is. Um, my brackets are not that bad. We are going to get into some Eagles news, but I did want to go over the basketball stuff first. Um, and honestly, it's not real much, too much Eagles news. Uh, like just some commentary stuff. I saw what uh, Jason Kelsey said about C.J. Gardner Johnson, which was interesting. Um, and he basically co-signed what I said about C.J. leaving when he left. C.J. Garner Johnson left. He did not want to leave. He wanted to re-sign, but I think he overshot his market. And very similar to what's going to happen probably with Hassan Jackson. I mean Hassan Jackson, Hassan Reddick. Because Hassan Reddick wants a certain monetary level. He wants a certain amount of money, probably anywhere between the 22, 25 million, probably realistically closer to the 22. And don't get it twisted. He's worth it. He is worth it. I'm looking for my remote so I can turn down this. I got stuff everywhere back here. There we go. Um, Hassan Reddick is worth it. It's worth it. No, no doubt. But what does the market say? The market is only what other teams are willing to offer. And going back to CJ, uh, <clears throat> that's what happened last year. I think CJ may have been looking for like, 10 or 12 million. And again, he may have been worth it. He very well may have been worth it. I think he was. However, Howie being a smart businessman, he said, hold on. Let me see what the market is going to give you. And the market was only going to give him between seven and $8 million, which was way lower than what he wanted. And he got it to his credit. And by his own words, he got into his feelings was feeling some kind of way because the offer wasn't as big as he wanted it to be because he easily could have played for, for whatever he was making in Detroit. How he could have gave him that with ease, but I think he was set on his number. Now, here's the funny thought. I, I don't I don't begrudge C.J. Garner Johnson for whatever it was he was asking for. Go for it. Know your worth. And you never get you'll never get what you're worth if you never ask for it. Same thing with Hassan Reddick. Know your worth. But the timing, Hassan Reddick, the timing is just not great for him right now. We paying all these other people, and you know how we how we be ready to move or move on. So um I don't know what's gonna happen with that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Um I don't know what they're going to do with that, man. Uh, um, I really, really, really want Hassan Reddick to stay with the Eagles. I really do. But I don't I don't know what's going what's gonna to happen, how that's going to play out. I hope there's a way we can placate him or move him. I still think Atlanta is the place that he is going to go. Um, but uh, we'll see what's going to happen. We've still got a lot of moves. I hope they can get it done before the, before the, the NFL draft so we can just get that 
chapter done. I would love to see him stay, find a way to stay. But even if he stays, even if he stays, now we're looking at a numbers game. And what I mean by that is you got a numbers game where we got all of these players. Somebody ain't going to be able to play. Nolan Smith, Brandon Graham, um, Hassan Reddick, Josh Sweat, Bryce Huff. You got It'll be a hell of a rotation. I know that. But that's not going to be the way that it works out. Because Bryce Huff is, you're not paying him that much money to be in a in a rotation. If they do pay Hassan Reddick, you're not paying him that much money to not be in on third and fourth down or, or you know, however it, it plays out for him. You If you're going to pay him that money, damn it, he need to be on the field. So BG is a little bit different. BG knows his role and BG understands where he is, but BG can still be impactful. They still want to see Nolan Smith because Nolan Smith, they spent the money on him. So they got to see what they got. So the numbers game is not necessarily contractual. The numbers game is you got all of these people on the field but there's only 11 people can be on the field at one time on defense or on offense. So you got to figure out what you're going to do with your rotation, who's going to get the most snaps, and you don't want to pay somebody for nothing. You don't want to waste somebody's year. You don't want to give somebody uh, the Rashad Penny treatment. I still feel bad for that dude because the Eagles did him wrong. They basically just wasted a year of his life. He got paid for it, but – so it's, it's uh, you know, we'll see what they're going to do, man. It, it's, it is after last year ended, after last year ended, it feels good to be in this situation. It feels really good to be in this situation because people are still looking at the Eagles like they are going to win the NFC. They're talking some people, not all, but some people are talking about the Eagles um, might find their way back in the playoffs into the Super Bowl, Super Bowl quality team, all of that kind of stuff to just be in that conversation, whether it's true or not, is irrelevant. If somebody can just look at the Eagles at a glance and see what Howie Roseman is doing and can say. That's a Super Bowl level team, that's they're getting it together to make their run for the Super Bowl. Just for for other people on the outside to have a to be window shopping and to be able to say that that puts us in a good situation. It looks like everything is coming together at the right time at the right speed because everybody's trying to catch the Chiefs back to back. Everybody's trying to catch the Chief and tell me why they can't be in the same situation next year. I don't I don't I don't see why they can't. Lawrence, what's going on, man? Yeah, man. I, I, I mentioned that earlier, bro. Uh, LSU was a little ugly today, but they got the win. They got the win. Um, Angel Reese didn't look like she was there. She was getting rebounds and stuff, but her offensive game, she was, yeah, she didn't look right, in my opinion. Uh, let me see if I can bring up her stats. Uh, Moreau had a great game today with 21. And what does she end up with? Angel Reese had 10 points. How many rebounds did she have? She had 19 rebounds. She almost had a, uh, she did have a double double. Um, yeah, she was, she was rebounded defensively because her, she was eight for 12 on the free throw line. She only hit one shot. She was one for seven. Everything else was free throw. So, yeah, she struggled a little bit. Uh, Helly Van Lith was a little sloppy today, too. Um, I noticed that one play that did that inbound pass where Angel Reese goes up and tips it back to Haley Van Lith, and Haley Van Lith didn't even look for it. They didn't even look for it. So, um, they yeah, they did a little look, look, ah, they did look a little bit sloppy. I agree. Um, but what you can say is, uh, 
to look that sloppy and still come away with a 10 point victory is saying something. It's saying something. It ain't speaking like Texas. It ain't speaking like South Carolina. We'll see what Iowa does and we'll see what USC and we'll see what UConn does tomorrow. But you play bad and, you know, you still get a dub like that. So that gives you time to get it together. South Carolina, Cardoso had to sit out her one game and they still crushed them by damn near 60 points or whatever it was. So, um, you know, my pick is still South Carolina. Honestly, I don't see I don't see LSU getting past the, getting out of the Final Four uh, like they did last year. I don't see them. I do not see that. I've got uh, – dang it. I think I have LSU getting beat by UCLA. If they are in if – if I remember correctly, where are they at? Where are they at? Yeah, I got – I got LSU losing the UCLA uh, in the Elite Eight. So, um, at least I think. I got to remember. I didn't, I'd have been messing around with so many damn brackets. It's not even funny. So, um, oh, they show our highlights. But, yeah, man, it, it's, it's uh, been a great tournament. Been a great tournament. Um, and like I said this afternoon, man, the one thing you can – the one thing you can take from the tournament, and that's why I like watching the tournament, especially the women's. I'm kind of sick of the men's. But all you got to do is make it to the tournament. Just like in the NFL, all you got to do is make it to the playoffs. Once you make it, once you get to March Madness, once you get to the playoffs, be it wild card, however it manifests itself, once you get there, you there. Everything else gets wiped off the table. Now, you still got to clean up your mess. You, you're working with a clean slate. But if if you if you limping past the finish line, you're going to limp in the playoffs. So you got to, whatever your issues are, you got to get them together. And the Eagles couldn't figure that out last year. Couldn't. So we'll, we'll see um, what they are going to do. What they're going to do. I keep going back and forth with basketball because, um, you know, everything's going on. But what I will ask this question is, um, everybody in the chat, it looks like we got 10 people on uh, in the Twitter space. So here's my question right now. Matter of fact, I'm going to put this. Let me see if I can put this in the chat in the uh, in, on the ticker. I'm gonna change it up a little bit. Uh, oh, you know what? Let's do another one. Hold on. Here's my question. Um, I ain't going to tell you. I'm going to show you. Is, is Caitlin Clark's is Caitlin Clark's legacy diminished if she doesn't win the title? That's the question. Diminished if she doesn't win the NCAA title. There we go. Yep. Is Caitlin Clark's legacy diminished if she doesn't win the title? That's what I want to know. If you're on a Twitter space and you can jump in Facebook. I'd appreciate it. Or uh, put your comments in the Twitterverse. I don't know if anybody's on um, Facebook. So I ain't even look. It's been very uh, active at my house. <laughs> so, um, yeah. A lot of stuff going on, bro. A lot of stuff going on. Personal stuff and stuff with the Eagles. And it's all good, man. Very exciting time. So hold tight. Let me see if we got anybody in Twitter space. I don't think so. Nah, it don't look like we got anybody in Twitters, but that's all good. I'm gonna keep an eye on it. So, is Caitlin Clark's legacy dis- diminished any if she don't win the title? And the reason I say that, um, again, I'm going back and forth, but just like in football, um, you look at Dan Marino, you look at um, 
You look at Allen Iverson. You look at Charles Barkley. Um, Carl Malone, John Stockton, Dominique Wilkins. I'm trying to think of other greats that never won a title. Jim Kelly, four times in a row. That's how good I think the Chiefs are right now. They can go to the Super Bowl four times in a row. But he never won. Jim Kelly never won. Hall of Famer, never won. Boomer Esiason, never won. Got beat by Joe Montana. Kenny Anderson lost one, and Boomer Esiason lost one with the Bengals. So my Bengals lost twice to damn Joe Montana. Um, Who else? Cam Newton. Uh, all those greats, but couldn't couldn't put it together to get to to get the to get over the hump man it is a difficult endeavor and for the eagles to go in 2017 and go back in 2022 um that's impressive and that's what i tend to lean on when i'm looking at what the eagles are doing right now and all we have to do is get back forget all of the nonsense you hear in the social media and all of that kind of stuff all we got to do is get back. We got the pieces in place. I talked about this the other day. Uh, I have to look. I know I still got my notes. Here they are. I still got my notes. Um, the the You go back and look at 2019 and you go look at 2022, Kellen Moore with the, with, the, with the Cowboys. And look at the balance. Kentucky is the Dallas Cowboys of college basketball. <laughs> I saw that man. Somebody else said that, and I laughed. I had to laugh. I had to laugh. I got a I got an interesting personal bias with University of Kentucky. Um, I graduated from Eastern Kentucky, and when I came out, uh, the only D one schools that were recruiting me was uh, Toledo. And I wanted to. I was thinking about going to the University of Kentucky, but. UK wanted me to walk on. They didn't want to offer me a scholarship. That's why I ended up at Eastern Kentucky. So I got a personal bias. But I flipped on Kentucky and I started liking Kentucky uh, in 91, I think it was, uh, when they lost to Duke in the Final Four. Because I hate Duke. My favorite basketball teams are uh, North Carolina, Cincinnati, and whoever's playing Duke. Those are my favorite teams. So, uh, but yes, Kentucky is the Dallas Cowboys of basketball. Did you see uh, the comments by by Calipari talking about he get, he needs to change some things up? I thought that was funny because that's an overall commentary that's going on in the NCAA. So whether you went to, um, whether it's, you know, Basketball or football, everybody's having the same problem with the NIL. And it basically, it's not the NIL, it's the transfer portal. Because they they having a hard time keeping students, keeping guys in there long enough because somebody will dip and go for a better offer somewhere. Imagine that. So, Lawrence, you with the Western Kentucky, man? You a hilltopper? What? You a hilltopper, man? I must have ran for 10,000 yards on the hilltoppers when I was in college. I had some great games, two or three touchdown games against the Hilltoppers. So, yeah, man. When did you go? When did you go to Western? I was at, I was at Eastern Kentucky from uh, eighty eight to ninety three, or the 88, 89 year. I graduated in ninety three. So, um, what year? What year were you at Western? Some of my homegirls played basketball at Western as well. They played uh, women's basketball. So, yeah, man. Uh, Kentucky in the building. Technically, we are uh, mortal enemies. Okay, so we were there around the site. You graduated in 87? So if you graduated like 89, 90, around that time, if you went to a football game, you would have you would you would have watched me work against Western Kentucky. 
Uh, so yeah. So did you graduate eighty seven or you you went in eighty seven? Eighty seven. I was still a junior in in high school. I graduated eighty eight. College was a blur, man. I went the 88, 89 year. I pledged Alpha in 80, spring 89. Normally, you, you, they say you shouldn't pledge a frat as a freshman, and I would agree. If I were to do it all again, I wouldn't do it like that. <laughs> um, yeah, man. I went 8, 19. Okay. So if you were there in 89, 90, or 91, you, if you went to a football game, you most likely watched me play because I wore number 40, uh, so 87, 88, 89. It may have been your third or fourth year there. If you went to a football game in 89 or 90 or 91, you most likely saw me play number 40. Marcus Thomas for Eastern Kentucky. I was the all-time leading rusher in OVC and 1AA history. Pearl River Junior College. I'm not familiar with that. Where's Pearl River at? Is that in Kentucky or is that like Tennessee? As I know, Western Kentucky is like Bowling Green is way over there. I used to hate that bus trip, man. Oh, I used to hate that bus trip. Lawrence, we old school, bro. We didn't. We didn't have a. We didn't. We couldn't play the. We could. Oh God, he's in Mississippi. Woof. Um. We couldn't we couldn't play the um the video games and stuff on the phone. We couldn't bring the Game Boys. We didn't have all of that stuff where we <laughs> all you had was your big thick thing of CDs for that trip. Uh let me see. Drew 23, you talking about Oklahoma on top. You talking about the women or you talking about the men's? Let me see. Let me see. Uh, Charleston, Alabama's about to win. Yeah, you got a couple men's games that are just getting started. Uh, oh, Western Kentucky went down to Marquette today. I am running. I don't understand what that means. I am running. I don't. Did you mistype something? Did you misspell something? I don't know what I own. Is that L O N or I O N? I don't run it. I don't. I don't understand what that means. Explain, Drew twenty three. Explain what that means. I'm not sure. So, but yeah, man, it's fun. It's funny, man. Six degrees of separation, Lawrence. Um. You know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that went to my school or went to your school or um, all of that kind of stuff. If you uh, if you ever went to any women's basketball games, Lawrence, uh, my home girl from my high school, her name was Kim Norman. She played basketball. Uh, cousin played NFL. Mark Carrier, why I remember Mark Carrier. Yeah, I remember him. Yep. EK, you had a couple guys uh, when I got to school. Um, Aaron Jones had just left. He played for the Steelers. Uh, I played with Tim Lester. Tim Lester ended up blocking. They called him the bus driver because he blocked for Jerome Bettis. John Jackson played with the Steelers. I played with the Eagles. Jesse Small played with the Eagles. Uh, Diallo Burks played with the Eagles. Um, Jason Dunn played with the Eagles and then played eight years with, in Kansas City. Uh, so we had a lot of guys. Chad Brasky played with the Giants and played with the Colts. So we had a lot of guys um, in the league, man. Myron Guyton won a Super Bowl with the Giants. The first rookie to ever start for Bill Parcells, Myron Guyton. So we had a lot of guys, man, in the show. Um, um, Elroy Harris played in Seattle. So we had some guys that, that made it happen, man. EK, you got a legacy in the show, man. So, but it's all good, bro. It is all good in the hood. So, but yeah, man. Um, trying to see what did I just see? Uh, oh, 
I definitely wanted to bring this up. Did you guys see what uh, Jason Kelsey, I think I started saying this, what Jason Kelsey was saying about C.J. Garner-Johnson and about his attitude, needing that guy in the locker room that has that type of attitude and how important it is and the energy that C.J. G.J. brings. Um, Don't be surprised if he gets a C on his chest this season in 24. Uh, Orlando Thomas. Who did he play for? Orlando Thomas. It sounds familiar. I know I've heard the name before. Who did he? Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me look him up. Orlando Thomas. He played for the Vikings. Okay. Uh, I don't remember. Oh, he passed away in 2014, it looks like. Um, so it was a rookie year in 95. My rookie year was 94. So he was with he was with the Vikings. So we never we never played the Vikings that year. What's good, Chris? Yeah, I I know the name, but uh I don't we didn't play him that year. So um Chris, we've been all over the place, man. I've been going back and forth with the NCAAs and talking about the Eagles and my time at Western Kentucky because we got a hilltopper in here. Um, yeah, but that's about it, man. Uh, still watching. Are oh, they just showing highlights from the other women's games today? Uh, who is playing on the men's? Alabama is up on Charleston in the second half. Uh, six minutes left, and James Madison in Wisconsin just started. Uh, Houston and Long Island just started. James Madison, I just said that. Um, and Northwestern just be FAU, that's over with in overtime. Yeah, Colgate and Baylor is playing. Or they they just got done. Baylor won that game. San Diego State won. Uh, and Marquette beat Western Kentucky. So it's we've been all over the place, Chris. So it's it's all good, man. It's all good. I'm searching for Eagles news because everything's kind of like the water's kind of calmed down a little bit. But we were just talking about Jason Kelsey's comments about um, C.J. Gardner-Johnson. And I I am thinking – that C.J. Gardner-Johnson is going to get that uh, captain's pass this year. I think he's going to get it. Because I think um, they missed his in- intensity. They missed his intensity. So, um, Now, I know a lot of people didn't really like C.J. Garner Johnson's attitude. I did. I didn't mind it because he was physical. He ain't f- afraid to get you on the ground, and um, he'll hit you. And he, he was tied for the lead in interceptions the year he was with us. But the one thing we got to remember, because we have two of our marquee players, Saquon Barkley, C.J. Gardner Johnson, Barkley had pretty much a clean year last year. He wasn't he wasn't dealing with too many issues. At least I don't remember him. Did Barkley get hurt last year? I don't think he did. I don't think he did. Let me check his stats. Uh, rushing, player search, Saquon. I don't think he got hurt last year. Saquon Barkley stats. Uh, looks like he got nicked up in weeks three, four, and five. He missed three games, but ended relatively decently. Um, yeah, it looks like he uh, 2023. Yeah, he missed three games. He rushed for two nine hundred sixty-two yards, uh, and he caught two hundred and eighty yards. So all-purpose yards, he was 
just over a thousand. Um, so he, he put up decent numbers. He put up decent numbers. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. But I think he's good. Like, I, it seems like he has been in the league for a very long time, man. But Saints, Eagles, you know, everybody remembers when he got in the face of, of, of Tom Brady. That was a that, that was his moment. That's when he came on the scene and everybody was mad at him because they thought he was bad talking Tom Brady. I'm like, hey, man, talk your talk. You make the play, talk your talk. That's what made Brady so annoying later on in his career is because he, he wanted to act like couldn't nobody touch him, couldn't nobody say nothing to him. That was annoying. Uh, I think, again, and I keep saying this, go back, look at 2022, and look at 2019 for the Dallas Cowboys. Look at their stats. Look at their pass rush balance. That is Kellen Moore. That's his track record. The Cowboys back then. So I don't mind see, seeing that. That tells me something. So uh, I like that. Especially the balance part. Because I'm with you, Chris. I want to see Saquon just wreck shop. We've had two years, really three years in a row, where we're going to have really good running backs, and we didn't use them right. We didn't use Miles Sanders right, and he still got 1,000 yards. We didn't use DeAndre Swift right, and he still got 1,000 yards. What happened when we get a, a an elite-level running back and we get a coach that knows how to use them? What is that going to do for our offense? That's what that's what we're trying to figure out. And I've got faith that that Kellen Moore is going to get it done. I think he's going to really uh, hit a home run because I think he's going to put a common sense package together. And that's what we haven't had in two years. How many times were we bitching, moaning and complaining that they wouldn't run screen passes or anything like that? How many times did we do that last year? So. I'm very uh, encouraged, and we haven't seen much of anything. We haven't heard much from Kellen Moore. I know he's in the lab. I know he's talked to uh, Jalen Hurts, and did you guys see the video of Jalen Hurts the other day? Running and bounding, and I was like, yo, the knee is tight. Uh, Yeah, you can say that, Chris. We went 10-1 first half of the season. Uh, It was good until it wasn't. And I blame that on the defense. If we would have had a defense that was just adequate. Just adequate. I know we got hit by the injury bug, but while we were getting hit by the injury bug, we still managed to get the 10 and 1. And then it just fell up. The wheels literally fell off. So the chaos in the coaching, you know, the coaching rooms didn't help much. Uh, I don't understand. I would really like to know from Sirianni, like, what was your logic in that? Like, what when you when you swap coaches like that, it had to be an event that happened. It had to be something that happened. And all of a sudden, you you're gonna be because because Sean Desai wasn't really doing a bad job. wasn't really doing a bad job. We had to hold on to some wins. And um, are you in Texas? You three hours from Houston. Okay. Um, I Sean Desai was. I would have been okay sticking with him to the end of the year. And then if they got decided to get rid of him, so be it. But that course of action is was very extreme, and it did it did not pay any dividends. So I don't like I don't understand that. I did not understand that. Uh Norfolk and Stanford just started. Uh I don't expect Norfolk State to beat Stanford, but I do want them to have a good showing. Uh if Jalen brought the turnover down by half, we could have been NFC Championship. Yeah, woulda coulda shoulda, man. Woulda coulda shoulda. 
I'm not blaming it all on Jalen, but Jalen has got to play better. And I just think that they um maybe they they listen they listen to too much outside noise and they didn't have to do that. Um you had a receiver that rattled off um a series of six games that he did something that had never been done in NFL history. And then we stopped giving him the ball. And that didn't make sense to me. That didn't make sense to me. <laughs> Woulda, coulda, shoulda. That was my sayings. Woulda, coulda, shoulda don't do nothing but rhyme. And opinions are like assholes and elbows. Everybody got one. So, yeah, I'm full of them, bro. Uh Yeah, what was I talking about? Oh, got me off. Got me off kilter. But anyways, so we got to get back, and we can get back to where we were. Um, I'm very interested to see what Kellen – I haven't heard much from Kellen Moore. And it is interesting, and it is very interesting how a lot of people think that this puts Sirianni on the hot seat and Kellen Moore is just waiting in the wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, AJ Brown slant being unstoppable. And we stopped going to it. It was almost as if they they were listening to the outside noise and the sports talk radio and all that kind of stuff. Like we became one dimensional and we're trying to force the ball to AJ Brown. And I'm like, when you force the ball to a player and he has that type of production, you know what you do? You force the ball to that player. That is not rocket science. That man did something that had never been done before in NFL history, and you stopped throwing him the ball. That makes no sense. None. You feed him the ball. If I knew for a fact A.J. Brown is not a diva wide receiver. However, comma, if that's what a diva does, feed him the ball. I'll take more of that, please. Yes, please, and may I have another. If that's what a diva does, what A.J. Brown did in that five or six game stretch or whatever it was, feed him the damn ball. Sorry, Devontae. Sorry, Dallas. This guy's getting it done. Every time that man grows across the, goes across the middle, you know he's going to break a tackle and you know he's going to make something happen. Give him the ball. But you know, that's too much like right. Too much like right. There's no reason that we had to stop doing what we were doing. We never used motion enough. We never had any um, any um, uh, shifts to really put the, the defense at at a disadvantage to try to figure out what the hell we were doing. We never did that. We never did that. So, I don't know, man. We we just, I said it all last year. Uh, our issues were not complicated. And we could have solved them. And we just didn't. So, um, yeah, it, it was. I get I get angry thinking about it. Because that was a, a wasted year. Not wasted, but we wasted an opportunity. So, uh, dude, you 100%. We got a Madden offense. 100%, bro. <clears throat> 100% with you. We have a Madden offense. It is crazy. It is absolutely crazy. So, uh, zero excuses. You got the best running back in the game outside of CMC. You got the best core receivers in the game, bar none. There is not, there is, there is not a better wide receiver duo in the National Football League. Point, period, end of paragraph. <clears throat> so, You got the, <clears throat> you you got the, the right ones. <clears throat> hmm. 
I gotta chase my water down with some, some my coffee down with some water. Good grief. <clears throat> so you are correct, Chris. He has no excuses. And all I gotta do is common sense stuff, man. Bruh. What what I thought I was the only one. Chris, I thank you. I thought I was the only one. I did a whole video about how to say his damn last name. Okwe Egbunum. Say it all together like a tribe called Quest. Okwe Egbunum. They just call him Albert O. I'm good with that. Dude, I was the only one singing his praises from the Raptors. I was like, y'all must not have watched this kid play. He is as big as Goddard. Probably a little bit bigger, a little bit faster, and a little bit more athletic. Find a way to get him the ball. Find a way to get him the ball. Put him in the slot instead of Julio Jones. And by the way, by the way, I would have rather kept Julio Jones rather than Devontae Parker. That's just me. <laughs> You like that Tribe Called Quest reference? I'm old school. I'm an OG, bro. Classic hip-hop for the win. Always. Always. I got love for Kendrick and all of them, but guess what? I'm classic hip-hop all day. I got a, I got like an hour and a half playlist of nothing but DJ Premier tracks. And I can zone after that, and I'll be on a computer, or I'll be doing something in 3D, and I will lose myself. And I will look up and it'll be like four hours gone in my day. Yeah, man. Big trap. Big trap. The low end theory, big. So. Yeah, man. I, I think we can. I think we should have kept him. But, you know, I don't know what the situation is. I don't know if he's going to retire. Um you know, I don't know what it, what 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 he's gonna do. So, uh, yo, that's my joint right there, Jason. Uh, my favorite is uh, probably. It's hard to say, man. It's so many good hits. I know I'm gonna forget one, but just right off the bat, I would probably say electric electric relaxation. Uh, <laughs> urban expressions. We got an urban expressions in the Cherry Hill Mall up here. At least we had one. <laughs> So, yeah, man. Mm, mm, mm. Come let me see. Get that song in my head now. Can I kick it? <laughs> oh my God! Say it all together like a tribe called Quest. Can I just call you Slick Back? Sunday night hip hop show, old school and underground. Yeah, man. I'll. You know what I've been listening to lately? I know the song is like ten years old, but yeah, stressed out is a good one. Um, um, I've been listening to Loaded Lux, the remix, right, with Method Man and Red Man. I can't stop listening to that song. That song came out ten years ago, and I just rediscovered it. Uh, like I listen to that. I listen to. Uh, um uh Lucini, this is it. Um still one of my favorite songs is, is um um De La Soul, Break of Dawn. That's one of my favorite jams. Uh a lot of stuff, man. A lot of stuff. Classic hip hop for the win, bro. Don't get me started. Don't get me listen, classic hip hop and cartoons. I am a certified nerd when it comes to cartoons, dude. I'm a certified nerd. I will go down a rabbit hole with Maka Gogo, uh, Battle of the Planets, Gotcha Man, um, the original Transformers lineup, all of that kind of stuff. Transor Z, the real, you know, Johnny Quest, the original Johnny Quest episodes. Do y'all remember Johnny Quest? Johnny Quest. Johnny Quest, the original Johnny Quest episodes and the original uh, when it debuted in the United States, Battle of the Planets, 
which was um, uh, Gotcha Man in Japan. But those two cartoons in the 70s, Johnny Quest came out, and I believe it's 69, 70. It was right then. Voltron 2. But Johnny Quest, Battle of the Planets, if you go back and watch those episodes and those cartoons, they are the only cartoons that were on TV that caught bodies. Folks died in those cartoons. Johnny Quest, mummies was killing folks and gargoyles was falling on people. And they was blowing up ships with, with men in lizard suits. They caught bodies on Johnny Quest. Gotcha, man. They were shooting people. It wasn't like G.I. Joe when everybody was missing. Johnny Quest was catching bodies. Battle of the Planets was catching bodies. Mark used to throw that little boomerang around that looked like a bird, and he used to take everybody out. They were catching bodies then, and then it, 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 then it stopped. Nobody, nobody caught that. Nobody caught that. Yeah, man. Cartoon Network. Yep. Toonami and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, man. Voltron, the Lions, the Cars. I didn't I didn't really like the cars. I wouldn't feel in the cars as much. The Lions was dope though. And then you had the stuff that we didn't see till later. You know, obviously everybody's a big Ghost in the Shell fan or an Akira fan. Um, Princess Mononoke, all that, the classic stuff, the Ghibli stuff. Um, the original Space Ghost, my all-time, all-time, all-time favorite was the Herculoids on the Space Ghost show. Love the Herculoids. Um, dude, you done got me going down a rabbit hole right now, bro. <laughs> so, yeah, man. Um, even the the even though the 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 writing was very, very corny, um, you know, the the Thundercats and the and the um, Silverhawks and the Tiger Sharks, even though Tiger Sharks really didn't catch on. Uh, a lot of people don't didn't really know about the Tiger Sharks because they never really caught on like the other ones did. And then you find out, you know, growing up and you find out like what happened to all of them good shows that used to come on. If if your cartoon didn't sell enough toys, they took you off the air. That was it. That was it. Uh, let me see. Norfolk State. All right, Norfolk. It's 13 to 10 Stanford, but Norfolk hanging tight. That's, that's what I want to see. Represent. But yeah, man, space ghost, coast to coast, all that kind. Of, not the not the coat, not the 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 show that came on. I'm talking about the original space ghost with his power bands and all that kind of stuff. Motar and all of them, all good. Trying to go to the Temple game this year. Remember my first Eagles game ever. Really want to see this offensive person. Nice dude. Nice. Chris, are you in Tampa? Are you in Florida? Definitely go to the game, man. Go to Tampa's got a nice stadium and a nice setup. Absolutely, dude. Go to that game, bro. I might end up go. I, I, I might end up pulling some alumni uh, strings and, and get to a game or two. Uh, I will definitely be at the alumni event this year. Um, so that should be fun. That should definitely be fun. I wonder if Jason Kelsey's going to do it. So I gotta, I gotta figure out a way to meet Jason Kelsey. Cause he went to Cincinnati. I'm from Cincinnati just to be able to talk on that level. That should be fun. But yeah, man, I can't wait to our alumni game this year. It's going to be, it's going to be hyped. I'm still mad that we got to go to uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil for week one. Not real. I'm excited for the game, but I, I, I don't like the fact that, that the Philadelphia has to lose that game. I don't like that. We have to give up one of our home games. So I mean, I understand it's a trade-off and they're trying to build the brand and all that kind of stuff, but that still sucks. That's one less game at the link. So, um, but we'll see how that works out. But yeah, man, Chris, go to a game, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, people ask me that all the time. Do I go to a lot of games? And I do not. Uh, I, I prefer to watch games at home chill it with my wife. We'll order some chicken wings or something like that and just chill out. As, as opposed to going into hustle and bustle of being in the stadium. Um, the only time I go down to the stadium 
occasionally I will go to a game, but normally the only time I really go down there if if I'm if it's for a, an alumni event. So, um, but I would definitely go to a game this year just to I want to see the show. I want to see Saquon in person and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I really want to do a I'm gonna do an episode of the podcast next year from down there. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh <laughs> break out the grill soon. Yeah, man. Uh I was supposed to do a brisket for Easter. I don't know if I'm gonna do it now, but I think I might find a small one to do it. Um my wife bought me a master built uh 1050 smoker last year. And uh that is one of those smokers where I can set the temperature and go in the house and go to sleep. So um listen, Jason, don't think that I was contemplating doing uh doing a grilling YouTube, a grilling and cooking YouTube, but I simply do not have the time to do that. With doing this and making this channel grow, um I was researching some things because I wanted to start a second channel and I thought about cooking, like grilling. You know, uh, I don't know, Jason, I don't know if I ever told you that, man. I, I was, it was going to be, and if I do it, I will still call it the same thing. It is going to be running back barbecue. Yep. But I just, I don't, cooking takes so much. I even, just messing around, every time I go out now, I'll set up the camera and I'll film. And I got one of the tripods that'll track movement and stuff like that. But the one thing I've I've realized, especially doing this for so long, is it is very difficult to do some of this stuff by yourself. You got to have somebody helping you. Or you got to have a setup to where it can film you when you're moving around and stuff like that. Um, so you got to have somebody that can help you out a little bit. And it's it's all me. My wife doesn't get into, you know, using the phones and stuff like that. So, and I want things to be a certain way. Plus, I know the technology and all of that kind of stuff. So, uh, it is very difficult to film, especially filming you cooking. It is very difficult to do that on y'all. So, uh, yeah, man, I miss cooking for y'all, bro. I miss that. I miss that. I used to, uh, me and Jason used to work at the Apple Store together in Cherry Hill. And every now and then I would I would cook a, like a couple racks of ribs and I would vacuum seal everything. One time I brought in, I cut up like two racks of ribs and just put them in Ziploc bags and brought them in. And I told people that I had ribs and you had people, people was coming into work that wasn't even scheduled for work. And then one day I talked to the, uh, this is how much they love my cooking at Apple. I told them I wanted to cook for the store. So they gave me a Saturday, they gave me a Saturday off and let me bought me the meat. They bought me six 12 pound pork shoulders. And I smoked um I smoked six pork shoulders and made some ungodly amount of pulled pork for the store. So they gave me a Friday off bought the food for me and I came in Saturday and set everything up and they gave me Saturday off and paid me for my shift and bought the food for me. That's how, you know, even though I'm not with Apple no more, Apple, Apple is a great company. They took care of me. I ain't got nothing bad to say about it. And I miss everybody in that store. We were tight. Jason, you already know. We was all tight in that store. We had so much fun up in there. Um, let me see. Uh, Chris, who are you talking about? The star of our team doesn't have much help. Who are you talking about? Which game are you watching? Which game are you watching? We got uh, we got 24 people in the Twitter space, and we got 30 people on the YouTube. That's not bad. That's not bad. So I'm, I'm playing around with my times, um, just so you guys know. Um, I think my Monday show, Monday at 9.30, Mondays with Marcus, I think that is going to stay because I'm doing all of this and I'm looking at the numbers. I'm looking at my viewership and stuff like that. And Mondays at 9.30 gives me the best, the best viewership that I've had. 
So that is going to stay. Um, my uh, live at lunch, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday is going to stay. Um, this is the only X factor is to like right now this Friday. So I'm going to see what my numbers are now. But this time might change a little bit. So, um, but Mondays, Monday night and Thursday night is solid. So that ain't going nowhere. I am contemplating moving my my Thursday nights. Uh, uh, maybe an hour later. I don't know yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some experimenting, so my times are gonna be a little bit wonky the next couple uh, weeks. So I'm experimenting. I'm trying to figure out how to how I can make this channel grow. If y'all got any ideas, uh, hit me up because I'm I'm really I'm to the point now where I'm putting a lot of energy in this site. And the feedback helps because now I'm starting to get traction and I want to go to the next level and I get, you know, the goals and like my right now, my goal is to get to, I want to get to 3000 subs before the end of the month, like stuff like that. You know, my long-term sky's the limit goal is to trying to hit like 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I know that's a lofty goal, but um, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to make stuff like that happen. So if y'all got any ideas, hit me up. In Twitter, hit me up on Facebook, Messenger, whatever. Um, yeah, I'm trying to trying to build it. If you build it, they will come. At least that's what they say in the movies. So, um, Chris, you still there? Who who was you talking about? Who's the star of the team? Don't get much help. I didn't know who you were talking about. So, but. Um, Oh, the um, did you guys see that, that they decided they are not going to ban the brotherly shove? They're not going to ban the brotherly shove. Um, so all the naysayers, they put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> so uh, that was all good, man. And um, I don't have any worries that Cam Jurgens will be able to execute. I want to see them run that. With damn uh, Saquon Barkley back there, uh, Chiefs like the Patriots took advantage of the problems with the divisional rivals like drama. Uh, a coaching change is happening so often. Absolutely, dude. That's not the Chiefs' fault. That ain't none, they ain't got nothing to do with that. That's everybody else. That's the problem with the league now. Everybody want to just add water and have instant great coach or instant star quarterback, and you can't. You can't look at what's going on with Justin Fields. Look at what just happened with Kenny Pickett. Look at it, it is difficult. That's why it's it's funny to me when you still have the naysayers about Jalen Hurts. You you saw what you want to saw. You saw what you want to see. <clears throat> Jalen Hurts should have thrown for 4,300 yards this year. But if it wasn't for the, the last six games and our offense acting like they didn't know what the hell they were doing, he's not without fault. But Jalen Hurts should have surpassed that. That's the bar to be considered a, a good quarterback. You got to reach that, in my opinion, you got to get past that 4,000 yard mark. And Jalen should have had it. And those last couple of games just were god awful. And I, I just didn't understand them. Didn't understand them. But that's water under the bridge. Um, we'll see what's going to happen this year with Kellen. I'm hoping that Kellen's going to put him under center. A little bit because I saw what he did in Dallas with Zeke. And now you got Saquon. Use him. That's play action waiting to happen. Uh, do you think Kyle Shanahan will will be like Andy Reid and learn from his Super Bowl losses? Uh, Kyle Shanahan, the 49ers are in the same situation that we were in after we lost. Because you still have a very good team that made it all the way to the Super Bowl. So everybody's cherry picking their roster. The roster isn't the same. The coaching staff isn't the same. And that is the that is the downfall of success. Everybody cherry picks your best players and your best coaches. So you got to refill them ranks. They already had to, to change up with the defensive coordinator and do, doing all of that. And you have no idea if, you, if your coordinator is going to – we ought to know that because we know what it means to where your defensive coordinator ain't getting it done. So now they got to figure it all out again. 
with a new guy. So, you know, again, I keep saying that the 49ers got the karma for talking all of that smack during the year. It was just karma. They lost the same way. They lost on the same play. And now their coaching staff and they roster getting cherry picked just like ours did. So they you're gonna learn today. You're gonna learn today. So I don't know. Um I don't know if Kyle Shanahan has gonna learn from his mistakes. This that was his what third trip to the Super Bowl? How many more mistakes does he need to learn? Uh let me see. How many times Kyle Shanahan been to the Super Bowl? He has two Super Bowl appearances as a head coach, and I think he's been there another time, possibly as an assistant, but um, I can't find that. But he's been there twice as a head coach and didn't get it done. At least we got one. We got a ring out of it. So, you know, we there's you can talk about Nick Sirianni all you want. At the at, at the end of the day, uh, he's been to the playoffs three consecutive years. What do you want? People get mad and and he's an immature coach and all of the stuff that they want to say about him, but he's been to the he's been to the playoffs three consecutive years with a quarterback that many people don't think is very good. But he's been to the playoffs three consecutive years. So uh yeah, they can talk smack about him, but he's getting the job done. So it is what it is. But we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Tush push rules. Tyler Hall. And I'm trying to see if there's any other news coming down the pipe. No, just everybody's still talking about Justin Simmons. Um, And it doesn't look like nobody's going to act on Justin Simmons uh, until we get closer to the draft. And his value, this is the business side that sucks because they're waiting for his value to drop. And when it hits the bottom, that's when everybody will offer him contracts. So now if he wanted $10 million and his value drops to seven, maybe somebody will offer him eight, eight and a half. That's just the waiting game. This is the business of it. Hassan Reddick's in the same boat. I, it, it would not surprise me if Hassan Reddick ends up staying. He's either, and I'm going to make this prediction right now. Hassan Reddick is either going to stay in Philadelphia or he's going to be in Atlanta. That's what I'm predicting. He either stays for another year and plays out his contract and hope, hopefully um, um, they'll give him some type of one-year deal and, and bump up the pay so he'll get the money he deserves. I can see how he's doing that. But I don't think he's going to get like a three-year deal somewhere unless he goes uh, Atlanta or possibly Baltimore maybe want to give him that type of money. So we'll see. But that's my prediction. I predict uh, he'll end up in Atlanta. And Atlanta is looking halfway decent now, although uh, you might want to give to the GoFundMe for Kirk Cousins because, boy, they pay him a lot of cheddar for somebody that never been to the playoffs. Well, I'll, I'll take that back. He's got one win in the playoffs. That's it. And they paying him a hundred mil. Man, I, whoever his representation is, they need to be put out a book series on how to be a millionaire. Because that is just ridiculous. Nobody else gets that type of. I don't even know what the word is. Gets that type of accommodation. Well, you've never. You have one playoff win in how many years was he with 
you know, in his time with Washington and his time in Minnesota. One playoff win? Okay. Okay. So we'll see what happens with him. And, and uh, you know, good for you. You got paid. That man's made over four hundred million as an NFL player. That is ridiculous for a for a good, not great quarterback. That is absolutely ridiculous. Can't get mad at him. Something I found out the other day. Um, I forget what we were talking about. Just like the differences, when, like when I played and the way that it is now. When I played, the league minimum was a hundred grand. I was an undrafted free agent. That made the squad, so I got league minimum of a hundred grand. Now the league minimum is like seven eighty five. I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me, man! Played in the wrong era. Seven hundred eighty five thousand is the rookie minimum. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. So, ah, must be nice. Must be nice. <laughs> uh, we on commercial. What's what? What are these scores looking at? Let me take a take a look real quick. Uh, see what the women are doing. I got to update my bracket tomorrow, sometime. Uh, well, Stanford's up by thirteen. It is twenty six to thirteen. Stanford. Um. What's going on with Nebraska and Texas AM? Did they is something happening? Because it was 6 6 0 a minute ago. It's still at 6 0. So I don't know if there's something wrong with the computer. Or, I don't know. Um interesting. Interesting. So yeah, man, it, it's uh Eagles are in a good spot and, and we'll be we'll be okay. We'll be okay. And Howie, we trust. Howie, we trust. One of the things I got to do is I got to put together a video of, and I don't know why I haven't done this, and I probably have some of it. I have to take a lot of the content that I have on my old channel. Back when I had a, I, I created a YouTube channel because back then everybody looked at YouTube like another MySpace or Facebook or something like that. It wasn't what it is now. So I've got some videos on there. I got some NASCAR stuff that I need to transfer because now it's NASCAR season. I got, um, but I got a lot of footage from when I was at the parade when the Eagles won the Super Bowl. And we were at the art museum with all the alumni. And I was with, you know, I got video, I got a ball. Um, Hold on for a second. Try not to try not to break nothing here. See if y'all can see this. So this is uh see, this is the stuff that I hate. Hold on. So this is this is my ball. From um, the Super Bowl parade. Huh, it's interesting. Well, there we go. Let me back up a little bit. So this is it. So I found this ball at the mall, and I, I, I found one ball with the old school Eagles logo from when I played. So I brought this to the parade because I knew we were going to be all together with the with the all the alumni. So I got all the alumni that was at the art museum. Sign my ball. Uh, plus my signature. I got Seth. I got Vince Papali. Um, everybody that was there. Mike Shad, Sean Landetta, William Fuller, um, Seth. Seth Joyner's right, right there. So, but here's the funny thing. <laughs> I lost it. I left it in my bag. And I left it like on a table in the art museum. And luckily, somebody found it and and turned it in. Somebody found it and turned it in. 
So I didn't. I didn't lose it because I was sick. I was sick about that. But yeah, man, that was that was fun. So I've got to get that footage. Um I gotta get I gotta get that footage from that event. Cause that was just a fun day, man, being out in the crowd. I ran into like Rhea Hughes, took a picture with, with her, a couple of cops. Um, and just the just the energy down there, man, was tangible. It was awesome. It was awesome. So, yeah, I got some stuff. Uh, I got to get that on this channel. I got to get um, my trip to NFL Films a couple months ago with the NFLPA. That was fun. Uh, ran into um, um, Big John Runyon. Ran into Greg Cosell. And plus all the guys that were there just for the tour. So that was cool. Uh, just a lot of – I got some content that I got to – put up that would be good for my channel so i gotta do that so uh definitely plan on doing that man thanks cody k so yeah that's the stuff i'm working on man so um like i said if you guys hit me if you guys don't follow me on twitter um you see my twitter handle scrolling across the bottom hit me up on twitter uh follow me on twitter or follow my uh pro fan talk facebook group and you can message me directly from there man because i am always 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 looking for feedback on what to do next i'm i am actively right now i'm joining like smaller facebook groups but i'm getting with groups that are on the west coast because there's a lot of eagles fans on the west coast and i'm trying to bring everybody together and you guys in here now i'm trying to work out a way where I can get you guys basically just to send me like a question where you be on camera if you want to be, because I'm trying to get it to where I can have people like, it would be like basically send me a 20 second FaceTime with a video clip that says, Hey, uh, this is such and such from, I could give you a Facebook group or however you want to be tagged. And it's like, the question is, and just so we can have a Q and a, so I think that would be good, good feedback, good back and forth. So I'm trying to do some different stuff, man. I'm trying to work on, um, you know, trying to get it a way where you could. I've seen it done before, but I don't know how it's done. So I can get it to where, like, you guys could call in. Like, literally call in. Because I know I can invite you to come on via StreamYard. I can send you the link. You could jump on. But I want to do it like a call-in show. Jump on real quick. Ask the question. That's why I was thinking about um, like sending a, a little video clip, like keep it short, keep it 20 seconds or, sh or shorter. So you got 20 seconds to ask your question. And then we can discuss that question for however long it takes. And plus you get the camera time and, you know, you can put your Twitter handle on and that'll, you know, help you get followers and all that kind of stuff. So I'm trying to do a back and forth and trying to make you grow, man. So um, there's a, there's a, there's a there's a void, not a void, but I think people getting tired of the same stuff they get on the radio because the radio was slow to to change. And I can get the information just as quick as they can get it on the radio. If not faster. So I'm working on things like that. I'm trying to find a way to do it differently. I've done this. Um, I am right now. I've been. It is over, let me see, September. Um, I'm trying to remember when I I reached a thousand subscribers last last September. Right now I'm at 2300 plus. And I'm trying to get to 3000 and then 4000 and you know trying to go up the ladder, but I'm trying to I got to figure out ways different ways to do it. So if anybody's got different ideas, I'm trying to I'm trying to do a lot of different stuff. And I, because I know how to do the graphic design and, you know, I know how to jump on OBS and, and um, hold on, let me see. I just need to put it on the page real quick. Yeah, I know how to jump in OBS and do, you know, transitions like that. 
you know, with the stuff changing in the background. Um, and this is using OBS. This is where I would put all of the video clips I got so I can bring up. You know, instead of me going up and down, I can bring them from left to right. And then it would just literally, it would play, you know, wherever I am. So I'm trying to do stuff like that, man. Because, you know, I don't figure out how to move me around. I can come over here, over there, you know. You know, I'm a nerd, dude. Make me, you know, make me a lot bigger or a lot smaller. Different stuff like that, man. So I'm, this, I'm in my world, bro. And I have the know-how to make it better than the average. So that's what I'm trying to figure out how to do is trying to make it better than everybody else. I'm about to do, you see me with the different backgrounds. Um, I'm about to create um, some different backgrounds. I'm going to put helmets in the background. I'm going to make it look like an office until I get my little office studio together. Um so so yeah you know what cody um i do a little bit of film study but there are so many people that do it better than i do so i like to learn and watch others but i do do a little bit of film study so um i mostly focus on running backs and techniques and what you see and different things like that so i am going to do more in that realm and it does um go into watching film and stuff like that. And I'm thinking about trying to do, trying to produce stuff um, because you can't do all of that on a live stream a lot. Um, I'm, I'm doing live streams now because live streams are a lot easier. I'm a, I'm a lot more comfortable now with just writing bullets, bullet points and just talking off the top of my dome as opposed to sitting down, jumping into DaVinci Resolve and literally producing a video clip. I can do both, but this is easier. And the return I get and the feedback I get when I go live is better. So I want to keep doing this and I'm going to, I'm doing more live streaming and less producing, but I still want to produce videos. So that's never going to stop. So and like one of the things I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to create content that is not seasonal. You know what I'm saying? So we talked about Jason Kelsey retiring. We talked about Fletcher Cox and Hassan Reddick. That stuff is not going to matter next year. So I'm trying to figure out a way to produce content. It's very difficult to produce content for sports that somebody will look will want to look at next year at this time. That's the that's the thing. So uh, working on stuff, man. So yeah, Chris, I'm gonna do it, man. I, I'm, I'm gonna break down some some running back stuff. I got a couple ideas. Uh, so I'm kicking around a lot of stuff, man, but I got a lot of stuff happening. So uh, right now I'm just writing down ideas because I don't want to, I'm, I'm bad about that. That That's the one, you know, I don't have CTE, but my short-term memory is shot because of football. So I write everything down. You know what I'm saying? So um, got a lot of good ideas that I'm writing down and trying to figure out ways to manifest it. Um, I got one idea that if I can figure out a way to, to get this done, it, nobody's doing it, and I I will never say it. I will never say it until I see somebody else do it. But damn it, I'm gonna be the first one to do it. I'm not even gonna say what it is because I don't even want to put that idea out there so somebody else can steal it. That's how dope it is. But I got to be the one to do it first, and I'm trying to find a way and find help the way to do it. Cause yeah, I got ideas, bro. Like I said, I'm a nerd, man. I'm a nerd. I was trying to I was trying to be the first dude to do a show in VR. I got my meta quest over there. But again, it's hard to do that stuff when you're the only one doing it. So um maybe uh maybe one day in the future when I'm making making enough money on YouTube, I can buy one of the Apple Vision Pros. <laughs> I can buy an Apple Vision Pro or I can get a car. How about that? So yeah, that thing is expensive, man. And not not version one. I'm gonna wait a little bit. I'm going to wait a little bit. So, yeah, man. But I, I'm serious about that, man. If y'all got ideas and stuff like that or something that you want me to talk about or see or anything like that, hit me up, dude. I'm trying to – because what here's what I've learned on YouTube. I can't do what I want to do because that that's not the way the algorithm works. The way the algorithm works is I got to do what you guys want to see. That's the difference, and that's the thing that people – don't realize when they get into this YouTube space. 
You can't make what you want to do. You can do that, but if you're going to do that, don't worry about the results. But if you want to grow on YouTube like I'm trying to do, the goal is to do what you want to do. Because basically the algorithm just tells you who your audience is. And if your audience says they want NFL footage, if the audience says, like Chris said, I want to break down running backs and stuff like that, you got to do what the audience says. And I put enough videos and stuff together on this platform where I can look at my analytics and I can go, okay, I see what's what people are responding to. So, and that's what I'm trying to do. So, um, yeah, I thought about that, Chris, but I'm trying to keep everything in house because I've seen how that works. And if I can keep everything on me, that's what I'll do. Cause I want to keep it simple. Cause I, I, I just, um, I wasn't in the situation, but I was close to a situation where on another network that was very popular in this area, it blew up and some of my friends got kicked to the curb because of it. So I'm very wary of that. And because I already know how to shoot and I know how to edit and I know how to do motion graphics and I know how to do 3d. It just takes me a little bit longer because it's just me, but I'm good with that. So I'd rather keep everything in house on me um, until I get to a point. Maybe I can cross that bridge later on down the line. So, um, so to your point, Chris, yes, I had thought about that, but I'm keeping everything on me for the time being. So, um, so it is what it is, man. It is what it is. So my goal is to be the best. And I'm seeing the guys that started. And I know this one guy, it hasn't even been a year, but when I started watching his site, he had 20,000. Now he got 50. He's like blowing up. And it's all I'm doing is watching what he's doing. Taking from what, if you're the smartest man in the room, find a new room. So, but yeah, man, give me that feedback, bro. Give me that feedback. So, uh, what's the scoreboard looking like? Because I'm going to get out of here, man. We've been rolling for about an hour and a half, so that's been good. That's been good for me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I see something new going on. Let me see. Oh, this is, uh, no, nothing new. This is the um, NBC Sports Philly. Is this Barrett? No, nah, this is Dave Zangaro and uh, Ashton Sullivan. So we get that. I got to get, I'm working on getting, uh, trying to get Barry Brooks back on next week. Um, Chris, uh, start it. Don't think about it. Just do it. Literally. Turn your phone on, record something, because YouTube lets you record vertically on your phone now if you want to go live on YouTube. Just do it. Don't think about it. That's what I tell people. When you, if you, if you're serious about starting YouTube, just do it. Don't think about it. Just do it. Because the time you use what happened to me, Chiefs are finalizing a deal to send Legereus Sneed to the Titans. That's breaking news. Cornerback Legereus Sneed to the Titans. Yep. So that's breaking news. But yeah, Chris, uh, just do it. Set up, set up your phone. Use your phone as your camera. Don't buy any equipment. If you got, um, if you got a pair of uh, Dre Beat headphones, or if you got the, the 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 iPhone headphones that that came in the box, the microphone on the iPhone or an Android phone is great. And use your headphones as the mic. Start from there. Keep it simple. Start with doing YouTube shorts. Turn the phone on and just talk. You got 60 seconds to record a video. And start from there. Just start doing it. Because if you start doing it, you can't help but get better. It's going to suck in the beginning. Because I look at my old videos and they suck. And everybody goes through the same thing. But before the pandemic hit, I was already doing a podcast. Jason, I don't remember if you, I don't know if you remember this. I had the podcast. It was it was called Pro Fan Podcast at the time. 
I was audio only. And the reason I was audio only was because I was too busy to do any type of editing. But it didn't click for me that I could live stream on YouTube and you not have to worry about editing. I, that didn't click for me. So in my attempt to save on time and just do audio only, uh, I would call people up and I had a, um, yeah, I remember, yeah, I think I told you, Jason. And I, my first guest on that audio only podcast was Vince Papali. And I, and, I, and they got it. There's a program that I was paying for a service that I was paying for that was very similar to StreamYard, like what I'm using now, except it did audio. And it would record both sides, those on your computer, you edit it, and then you posted it up. And I had it on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and I'm doing all that kind of stuff. I think I did like 15 episodes or something like that. But my point in telling that story was, I, I remember calling. I called Mike Quick, asking him for advice. I called Mike Quick, and I called Brian Baldinger. Because I was like, you guys are on the air. Like, what should I do? How should I approach it? Like, I was trying to get advice on because I knew I was going to do it. And I remember telling Mike Quick I didn't want to do video because I didn't want to have to edit it. If I, I wish I would have done video four or five years ago, because I know how far I would have been now. So that's why I say just start. Don't think about it. Just press record on your camera and upload it to your to your channel. All you got to have is, is a Gmail account for your channel. So just record anything. It could be the stupidest thing. It could get you singing the fight song. Or you could type something up and regurgitate it. It don't matter. But just record it and put it out there. And then, you know, you just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. So, yeah, man. Do it. So, uh, what else is going on? Something else just came through. Breaking the, what is this? It's 10, oh, that's basketball. Talking about the tournament again. So, so yeah, that's the only breaking news with the Chiefs. So, um, yeah, how we missed out. Or, no, 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 he didn't miss out. Uh, Legereus Sneed had a decision to make, and he chose elsewhere. So, always remember, it ain't it ain't all Howie. You can offer, but somebody has to accept. So, um, can't put everything on Howie. So, but, um, but yeah, man, it's, uh, uh uh-oh, there we go. Hold on. Yeah, we good, man. So, uh, we've been rocking for about an hour and a half, man. So I'm gonna get up out of here. It's about 11 o'clock. Chill with the wifey because I know she about to shut it down. Maybe make me some popcorn, watch Food Network. Um, and I'm gonna get out of here. Probably have more news this weekend, so possibly I'll go live. Um, but if not, you guys will see me um, Monday nights with Marcus at 9.30. And then, of course, I do my live at lunch Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12.10. My live at lunch is growing, man, so I like that. Less than an hour, quick in, quick out, and I'm digging that. So, um, But the big thing is Monday and Thursday. So... Uh, and I'm gonna try to get. Uh, I'm gonna send a notice out to uh, see if I can get Barry Brooks back on. Or I got Barry Brooks. I got my boy Ron Carpenter. Ron Carpenter won a Super Bowl with the Rams. Um, my boy Willie T. I'm gonna try to get Willie T. on. Uh, and a couple more, you know, former players I could probably get on. So I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So I'm gonna get up on out of here, man. Uh, Y'all have a great weekend. The games are going to be fire. And if there is any news about what the Eagles are going to do, I'll be jumping on and posting the video. So keep checking the site and do me a favor. It sounds cliche because you hear it all the time watching the videos. But tell somebody to subscribe to my channel. Send it to somebody that is an Eagles fan. Don't, you know, you know, tell your brother or your sister and they don't like football. Tell it to somebody that can appreciate Eagles football 
Yes, you know, a former player, and he's got a dope ass podcast. So help me out. And I appreciate you guys. And I will talk to you guys later. Probably see you guys. I'll probably have some um, NCAA stuff. I will definitely have my bracket update tomorrow. And then, of course, we got it going on on Monday. So, Cody K, I appreciate you. Jason, I appreciate you. Chris, I appreciate you. Um, did I miss anything? Bow 316, I appreciate you, bro. Um, Lawrence Jacobs, if you're still listening, I appreciate you, brother. Um, Drew 23, I appreciate you. Everybody that tuned in, man, let's keep making this thing grow. And I will see you guys on the next one. Go Birds.